Good day and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I plot an existing survey plan in Autodex Revit. And I'm also going to be sharing with you how I model the said site plan to a presentation level. So if this is your first time on this channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. We drop architectural content on a weekly basis, so make sure you stay tuned. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the content. Alright, so we are in Autodex Revit now and we just opened an existing project. So the first thing to do is we are just going to access our file and open the survey plan we want to use for this project. So we are just going to click on the image and drag it into Revit. Alright, so as you can see, you can see the images, you can see all the boundary lines and all the coordinates and data pertaining to this image. So we are going to be transferring the data from this image into Autodex Revit and I'm going to be showing you how. So we are going to go to Massing and Sites. Before we do anything in this Massing and Sites, we are just going to go to this Model Sites drop down tab here and we are just going to click on it. So once we've clicked on it, we are going to click Property Line Data. So this is going to give us access to some settings. So under this angle display, we are going to make sure this is set under degrees, not degrees north and south is important so we are going to make sure these units is in degrees meter and second which is okay and we're just going to click okay so now we are going to go to property line so in this property line is going to give us two options either we create it by sketch or we create it by entering distance and bearings so i'm showing you the easy method so i'm going to show you create by entering distance and bearings which is very easy now we are going to be transferring data from this image to this tab here so to start we are going to be going from this line here and we are going to be going in a clockwise direction Note in a clockwise direction. So we're going to be starting from this line to this line to this line. So let's start. So currently this first line we have 20 meter 20.58 meters. That is in millimeters 20,580. So we are just going to impute that. Okay, we're also going to impute the bearings 347 degrees. 347. And this other bearing is 34. So we are going to make sure we impute it accurately. So now we have imputed one data. So if you want to impute the data of another boundary line, we are just going to click on insert. So it will give us, it will bring up another tab to impute the data. So this second line is 61.79 meters. So we are going to be putting it, that is 61,790 uh, millimeters. So that is 61.79 meters. So we are also going to be putting the bearings and we are going to be putting 80 degrees and 54 okay so again we're going to click on insert and we're going to be imputing this third data so we're going to be putting the distance first 27.59 27,590 millimeters okay so we're going to be putting the bearings and we're going to be putting the bearings 165 and we're going to be putting 08 Okay, so we could just decide to impute this third line, but there is no need for that. And here is why. If you have brought in the three data, that is these three boundary lines, you what you are just going to click on is you are going to click on this add line to close. And Revit is automatically going to close the loop for you. So it will give you this third line. And if you look at the data from this third line, you actually notice the similarities. This is 63.75. This is 63.74.0, which is very close. And the differences are, are negligible. So you can also see the bearings 267 degrees. You could also see 267 degrees here. So we're just going to click OK. And now the site has been plotted out accurately in Revit. So now we can now delete this because we don't need it. But first, before deleting this, very important to take cognizance of the north arrow. In the case of this image, the north arrow is actually facing upward. So we're just going to go to annotate here and we're going to use tail line. So in this detail line, we're just going to draw our detail line and we're just going to draw some, something similar to an arrow just to indicate that the north is here, which is very important. Then we can now delete this image. So as you can see, I'm going to click Ctrl Z because I want to use the image for something. I could actually see there is an existing road here. So I'm also going to go to Detail Line and I'm going to depict the existing road. So I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to go to this Select Line tool and I'm just going to pick this line and I'm going to go to this Offset tool to offset it. So I'll just, I'm just going to mimic this existing road. I'm going to offset it by 2 meters. This is 20 meters, sorry. Then once I offset it 2 meters, I'm also going to change this offset in number to 8 meters so it will give me the offset of the road then i could delete this line attached to the boundary of the site then i could just use another line annotate i could use another line to close this loop close this and i'll just click on the line and drag it click on this line and drag it so the road will extend 
I could also select the lines depicting the north arrow and just move them to a clearer position. So as you can see, we've created, we've plotted out the site and we've indicated the north arrow and the road, the access road. So we're just going to select all of this and we're going to rotate it at 90 degrees first. So we're just going to click on this rotate tool. Once we click on it, a line will come out giving us the ability to rotate it. Then we're just going to click on one point, go to the next point and click 90. Impute 90 degrees so it will move, it will rotate at 90 degrees. We want to place the size plan and synergize it with the building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from this building. I'm going to go to annotate because I want one part of the building to be perfectly aligned with the site. So I'm just going to click on detail line. I'm going to draw a line from this building and just draw one line coming out to this point. Then I'm just going to select this whole site again select this line as well then I'm, I'm just going to group them for now i'm going to go to this create group icon here if you didn't see how i did it i went to this create group icon then i'm going to i'm going to rename the group as site I'm going to click ok so as you can see i've grouped this together so i can now move them around freely so i'm just going to click on move and i'm going to move this site to somewhere here i'm going to use align which is the shortcut for align is al I'm going to select this line and i'm going to select this now so the site has perfectly aligned with the building the only issue is that some of our line got displaced out of proportion but it's nothing we cannot solve later so we're just going to click on this group again and we're going to move it and adjust it to a good position okay what i'm going to do now for the positioning of this building i'm going to use annotate and i'm going to use some lines to determine where best will the site be placed but before i do that currently from this view we could see the roof of this building now if you are working on site plan it's always better you work from the ground floor where the walls actually protrude from so to solve this issue we're going to go to view range here and edit the view range to do that we're going to click on edit tab here then we're just going to change the parameters of this view range so we're going to change this top with associated with dpc and we're going to change the offset to 600 the offset here to 600 so we're going to click apply and now we could see the walls on the ground floor which is good we could just click on this pipe so now we can see the ground floor walls and we can see the site so we're just going to be going to annotate again we're going to go to detail line so under this detail line we're just going to draw a line and offset a certain distance where we want the building to rest on on the site so we're just going to offset five meters here and we're going to offset about three meters here or let me make it okay let me make it 3.6 so i'm just simply going to click on this site i'm going to click on this move to I'm going to try and automatically drag it to this point here and I'm just going to click on this as well and I'm going to try and drag this point from here to this line here so it will rest well on the building. So as you can see the building is actually resting well on the site and there is a lot of space here. Okay so now I could just select this and I could select this whole group and I could click on group so now we don't need it grouped again. So now I'm just going to select all these lines here and I'm just going to adjust them. So I'm just going to click on move and simply adjust it to an appropriate position. Then I'll adjust it by 3.3 meter. All right, so we have our site plotted out. So the next phase we are going to go into is drafting. So for the drafting, we are going to draft out the site layout, how we want this site to be and the features we want to be on the site. Okay, so now we are done with the drafting, we are going to start entering the modeling. So the first thing we are going to do before entering the modeling is we are going to hide some things. So firstly, we are going to click on these grid lines, we are going to right click and click on hide by hide in view by category and hide them. So the next thing we are going to do is we are going to click on this gas cooker, right click, hide in view by category. Okay, so now we are going, going to go to annotate and we are going to go to field region. Under this field region, we are going to be looking for diagonal down. So we are going to click on edit type, we are going to click on duplicate, we are going to call this building, building, let's just call it building. 
so we are going to do this because we want to use this for the footprint of the building and we are just going to select a simple diagonal footprint or diagonal field region so now we've selected it we are just going to use change the thickness of the line the line way to wide lines and we're just going to use this pick line tools and we're just going to select the edges of these walls as the perimeter of the footprint so now we are going to use the trim tool to trim all of them to form a single unit okay i forgot to add one line then i'm just going to trim this all right so now we've formed this building footprint so we know where our building is and the footprint of the building we are going to select these overlapping elements we are just going to take our time to select them individually and we're just going to select all of them and we're going to right click and hide in view by elements not by category okay so now we have our site we have our building footprint so we know where we are going or we know where we are headed so now we're just going to be using some floor works typically some people can use massing and sites to create a topo surface but i don't use that for site plans especially site plans that are relatively flat i use the traditional floors to create my site plans so i'm just going to click on floor so under this floor i'm just going to click on duplicate to start creating the floor types for each aspect of the site plan so i'm going to create this and duplicate and i'm going to name this 01 asphalt because i want to use this as the floor for the asphalt route so i'm going to click on edit and i'm going to change the material to asphalt material so i'm going to right click duplicate then i'm going to use the name in 01 asphalt then i'm just going to click on this tab over here to assign a new material to it then i'm going to appearance i'm going to go to site work then i'm going to look for aggregate high then i'm just going to click ok so since i've already drafted the site plan i could just click on this select line tool and i'm just going to pick the edges to suit click on this click on this and click on this so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the trim tool to trim it so it will fit in then i'm going to make sure this is at level ngl that is the lowest level and i'm going to make sure the height offset is at zero then i'm going to click finish okay so now we're done with the asphalt road so now we could just go to architecture and go to floor again and repeat the same procedure but for a different type of floor this time we're going to do it for the green area so i'm going to click duplicate i'm going to name this 01 green area one i'll be using different type of green areas for this project then i'm going to go to edit i'm going to click on this material tab to assign a new material i'm going to right click and i'm going to click duplicate and i'm going to name this green area one so now i've done this i'm just going to click and assign a material then i'm going to go to appearance i'm going to go to site work as usual then i'm just going to add this grass and just click on this switch icon to assign the material then i'm going to click apply and we're going to click ok so now we're just going to be using the same pick part and we're going to be picking the green areas so i'm just going to pick this i'm going to pick this i'm going to pick this I'm going to pick this this and just be picking all the appropriate lines i need for this green here now i'm going to be selecting the perimeters of this wall so now we're also going to be picking the edges of this stamped concrete so i'm just going to select one line tab go to a line hover around it once it's highlighted you click on tab it will select all of them so it will be faster Alright, so now we are done picking all the parts, we are just going to use the trim tool to just trim some necessary edges. And we are going to trim this too. Uh, we could delete the lines here, we could just trim this against this, trim this line against here, trim here. Then we could just create another line here. Then we could just trim this as well. Okay, so now we've trimmed everything, we are just going to click finish. And you can see there are some issues here. Revit is already giving us some warning that some loops are not closed. So we're going to make sure it's always good to make sure you thoroughly trim everything. So because if you don't trim everything and everything is not a closed loop, Revit will surely give you issues and give you notifications telling you can't work. So now we've trimmed this. We're just going to save the project. Very important. All right. So there is a graphics issue here. I'm noticing that this this floor has a graphics preset already. So I'm just going to try and select it. So I'm just going to go to 3D view. So I could easily select it. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to click on edit in place. So I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to click on edit this green area one. So as you can see, if you go under this tab here, 
once i've clicked on this green area one you just click on this graphics tab and you see that some things are already set in place which i don't need necessarily need them to be set so what i'm just going to do it instead of this one removing it entirely i'm, I'm going to leave it as solid field i'm just going to change this to green so it will fit in the context of being a green area i'm also going to click ok and i'm going to click on this pattern and i'm going to just scroll up and click on no so it won't be looking weird i'm going to click apply click ok click ok click apply again click ok then go back to site plan so as you can see we have edited and we have placed this green area so another thing i want to be doing for this green area is i'm just going to delete this line here i'm going to click on this i'm going to make this green area the offset from this level at minus 10 because i want it to be a bit below the interlocking as you will see i'll create soon now so now i'm going to go to floor again architecture i'm going to repeat the same thing i did before i'm going to click on edit type i'm going to duplicate now i'm going to be modeling the interlock so i'm going to name this 01 interlock all right so i'm going to click ok and i'm going to click on edit and i'm just going to simply change the material i'm going to right click duplicate material with assets name it 01 interlock 1 then I'm going to click this icon here to assign a new match. I'm going to go to apply. I'm going to go to site work. So now we're in site work. I'm just going to click on this cobblestone and I'm going to change it to cobblestone. Now I'm going to go to this graphics. I'm going to set a new pattern. Instead of the regular pattern, I'm just going to click instead of this draft. I'm going to click on this modeling tab here and I'm going to look for a better pattern to display the interlock. Okay, let's try this. So I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to change this background from solid fill to none. So there will be no background pattern. And I'm also going to change the color of this interlock. I'm going to make it lighter and I'm going to make it towards brown. And I'm going to click OK. So I could also edit the scale. I could click on duplicate to duplicate this um, scale here. I'm now going to reduce the scale to 2. And so the scale will be bigger. Increase the scale rather to 2. Then I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK. Apply okay so now i'm not going to be drafting out or picking the path for this interlocking stone so i'm just going to be picking this i'm going to be picking all this because i want the interlock to be here so this extra line i added to the interlock is just for aesthetical purpose so the boundaries of the site will be more defined so i'm just going to click on this split tool to split in between here and i'm going to start trimming immediately now we are going to click finish okay so as you can see you can see the interlocking tiles you can see the pattern we did here this pattern is actually too small so we could just click on it again and we could click on edit and we are going to edit the scale of the graphic setting edit again we are going to click on edit to this interlock we are just going to click on this pattern and we are just going to click on this icon here to edit it so now we are going to change it to five instead of two and we are going to click ok we are going to click ok ok and OK apply so as you can see now the scale is bigger we can now appreciate the pattern and the graphic setting of this floor now okay so now we want to create another interlocking stone to fill up this pattern here or this line here so we are going to go to architecture we are going to go to floor we are going to click on edit type we are going to click on duplicate and we are going to name this interlocking tool which it has already given us the name so i'm going to click on edit the structure i'm going to click on this to change the material so i'm going to right click i'm going to click duplicate material and i'm just going to change this to interlock tool so under this the first thing i'm going to do i don't want any graphic settings attached to this interlock so i'm just going to click on this pattern and i'm just going to scroll up and click on none so i'm just going to click on this icon here to assign a new material appearance as usual site work then i'm just going to select just animal i could use this blue stones apply okay okay apply and okay so now as you can see we have an issue here it's not really an issue but it's just to make things easier we will, instead of picking all this pattern once again or picking all this part especially since we have already picked it before when modeling the other interlock we could just close this now or we could just simply draw a circle and just finish now okay so don't mind the circle you see why i drew it so the settings we did in this new floor will save so i'm just going to click on this i'm going to click on edit in place so i'm going to just highlight all these lines and i'm just going to click on copy so i'm going to click finish 
and i'm just going to click on this circle we created with that with this new interlocking tool i'm going to click on edit in place i'm going to delete this circle first and i'm just going to pick paste under this paste i'm just going to say paste aligned to current view and the profile we edited before will just automatically copy so i could just select this profile delete and start deleting the peripherals all right so now i'm just going to trim the remaining open loops trim this as well and i'm just going to trim this too or rather just draw a new line to fill in here then i'm going to click finish so as you can see this is easy so the same principle we just did now we are going to do it for the next stamped concrete slab you are going to be using for these perforations here so as usual i'm just going to select this green area i'm going to highlight this profile and i'm going to click copy to clipboard and i'm going to click finish so now i'm going to start creating stamped concrete for these perforations then i'm going to go to architecture i'm going to go to floor again then i'm going to click on edit type i'm going to click duplicate and i'm going to name this stamped concrete or stamped concrete slab all right so i'm going to click ok i'm going to click edit and i'm going to change the material so now i'm just going to right click duplicate material and i'm going to name this stamped concrete okay now we've done that we're just going to click on this to assign a new material appearance we are going to go under concrete we are just going to select regular concrete and we're going to click apply and we're going to click ok and we're going to click ok okay so now we're just going to go to this paste align to current view so the profile we copied before we just paste so we're just going to do some little modifications then we are good to go i'm going to try and select all these peripheral lines and i'm going to delete it so now i've deleted it it's only the concrete the stamp concrete profiles that are set which is actually good i'm just going to add some little more few lines here and here i'm also going to add some new lines here because i just realize i just need to add some stamped concrete here could add one somewhere here and i have to click so now for this stamp concrete i'm going to make it a bit above this um, level we are so i'm going to going to click height from offset i'm going to put it at 30 and i'm going to click finish so now and as you can see the thing gave us an alarm message what this message indicates that this stamp concrete is interfering with this slab we created before so we could just adjust that by clicking on this and clicking edit boundaries then we're just going to use our pick lines to just pick the profile the new stamped concrete profiles we added then i'm going to click on finish so as you can see you can see how this plan is coming out it's coming out very nice okay so now we are going to be working more on accessories and graphic settings but before we do that i'm going to create one more floor i'm going to go to or rather two more floors i'm going to go to floor i'm going to go and select this green area green one green area one i'm going to click on duplicate edit type i'm going to click on duplicate i'm going to name this green area two okay so i'm going to click ok i'm going to click on edit i'm going to assign a new material by duplicating this green area i want to duplicate green area 2 so we're going to change this to green area 2 and we're just going to assign a new material we're going to go to appearance and we're going to go to warp um, site work so we're just going to change this to another type of green area that may be lighter the reason why we're changing it is we want to use it for future references so we could easily see the graphical differences between the two green areas change it to a totally different one that so it will not interfere so we will not be confused when we need it again or we want to edit it in future i'm just going to click ok and i'm going to click ok again ok so unlike this former green area this our uh, new green area will be offset at 150 millimeter above the ground natural ground level so we're just going to use pick lines or use this box profile to just draw our profile where we want them to be i think this two and one will be here okay so we're just going to click finish so now it's telling us the flaws are overlapping which i think is fine but we are going to click on this green area now because this green area is sharing graphic properties with this former green area so i'm just going to click on edit i'm going to click on edit green area and i'm just going to edit this material i'm going to go under this graphic setting and i'm just going to to, to take some time then i'm just going to remove this background to none then i'm just going to click apply click ok click ok apply okay so as you can see this green area has reverted to its default setting without any pattern i'll still work more on the graphical pattern later but for now let's keep going okay so now i'm going to go to floor again 
and I'm going to finally create the last screen area, which I'll just click on edit type. I'm going to click on duplicate. I'm going to name this. It has already automatically given it a name green area three. I'm going to click on edit and I'm going to just duplicate this green area and I'm just going to duplicate this to green area three. All right. So now I'm going to click OK, click OK click ok so now i'm just going to select this green area 3 is just for the background of this site plan it's always good to give your site plan a background so it will help in the graphic setting and it could also help when you are rendering so i'm just simply going to draw a square around it then i'm just going to click on this trim tool click on this split element tool and click on this as well split here too then I'm going to trim it. All right. So now we're going to click finish. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to edit modify elements. I'm just going to select this line and make sure we synergize everything together. Then I'm just going to delete these residual lines on the useless. I'm going to click finish. Then I'm going to delete this. Okay, so as you can see, we have gone so far with the site. So we're just going to go and go to 3D view and view what we've done. So as you can see, you could see the footprint. Okay, one more thing, we need to create a footprint for this. So let's just go back to site plan. And we're just going to edit this stamp concrete, edit it. And we're just going to use it to fill up this point. And click finish all right so as you can see we've done a lot of work we've created the floors the interlock the stop concrete which is good and all but we now want to add some curbs in in this project now so to add curbs in autodex Revit, there are many ways to add curbs you could use model in place you could use extrusion you could use sweeps you could even use massing but in this video i'm going to be showing you how to use slab edges to create nice curbs for your site plans so before we do anything we are going to create the profile of the curbs we want to use so we're going to go under this file we are going to click on new under this new we are going to click on new family so under this new family we are just going to select profile host profile hosted then we are going to click ok so under this profile hosted you can see the titles the annotations here you could see the insert point you could see the host face so just imagine this as the slab and we are going to draw the profile so you are going to click simply click on line we are going to now click on and start drawing the profile first of all as you can see the unit is currently at feet and inches so i'm just going to type un to change it from feet and inches to millimeters so i'm just going to click on this lens then i'm going to click the, this drop down icon and click on millimeters so i'll be able to change it to millimeters so i'm just going to draw the profile of the caps i'm going to make it 150 i'm going to let's make this 50 let's make this 125 and let's make this 100 so i'm just going to join this here so now we've created this profile i'm just going to click on this a family category or profile category so instead of just leaving it profile uses as generic i'm just going to click on it and i'm going to change it to slab edge and click ok then i'm going to save it i'm going to save it as slab edge and i'm going to click save then i'm just going to click on load into project and close then i'm going to load it into this project the project we are working on so now we've done that we are going to go back to 3d then we're going to go to architecture we're going to go to floors under this floor we're going to click on this drop down icon we're going to click on floor or slab edge then we're just going to click on edit type just going to click edit type and we're going to click duplicate and we're going to name this as curbs and we're going to click ok so now we're going to change this profile we're going to look for the profile we just loaded in slab edge main and we're going to click on it we're also going to assign material to it and we're going to just assign the material as let's look for a good material let's just use create one duplicate and we're going to name this caps then we're just going to assign a new material to it let's log just for uh, um, appearance let's go to go to wall paint and let's just give it a nice white material and we're just going to click apply and we're going to click ok apply ok so now we've done that we're just going to click on this vertical profile offset and we're going to click on minus 150 
then we are just going to start picking the edges of this floor slash slab we're going to pick this edge we're also going to do the same here and pick this edge so as you can see you can create curves seamlessly even on other floors for instance if i want to create curves here i'm just going to pick this pick this and pick this and pick this which makes our work beautiful so now we're going to go back to the site plan and we're going to start working on graphical aspect of this site plan so for the graphical aspect to start we're first going to click on crop region crop view so under this crop view we're now going to click on show crop region so we could adjust it so i'm just going to click on this and adjust the crop region to a suitable point and i'm just going to click on crop hide crop region now now i've adjusted it i'll click on hide crop region so now we have done the site so the first thing to do is we are going to mark out the boundary lines of the site before doing that i'm just going to hit tl to turn on my tick lines because before i used tl to turn off the tick line so the tick lines are not visible so now i can see any line that is thick and any line that is not thick that's why you can see the thickness of this boundary line now i'm going to go to annotate but before doing that i want to create a default line a custom line for the south boundary line so i'm just going to go to manage so under this manage i'm going to click on additional setting i'm going to go to line styles under this line style i'm going to click on new i'm going to call this site line or zero one site then i'm going to click ok so now i'm going to change the properties of this line i'm first going to change the color to red i'm going to change the nature of the line from solid continuous line to dash and dot now i'm going to change the thickness of the line to about um let's use it and i'm going to click ok so now i've created this line if i go to annotate if i go to detail line i'm just going to click on this option to look for it then i'm just going to see it site then now i'm just going to carefully just go to pick line tool and i'm going to pick the edges of this project So the line didn't come out as I intended. What am I going to simply do? I'm going to go back to manage. I'm going to go to additional setting line styles. Then I'm just going to click on this plus icon. So other type of lines will show. Then I'm just going to look for the site line I recently created. So I think it's somewhere. All right. So now we found the line. I'm just going to change it from AC dot four millimeter. I'm going to change it to dash and dot. I'm going to look for the appropriate. Okay okay so i'm just going to click on this i think this is what it should be then i'm going to click on apply and i'm going to click okay so as you can see the site line the boundary line is looking appropriate i'm going to go to this modify tool i'm going to go to click on split and i'm going to just split this at this point i'm just going to use this trim tool here and i'm just going to trim this on join elements and i'm going to trim this on join element so as you can see you can see the site plan is coming out well then i'm going to go to annotate i'm going to go to field region under this field region i'm going to change this from building i'm going to click on edit i'm going to click on edit type i'm going to click on duplicate and i'm going to change this to field region now i've done this i'm going to click ok and i'm just going to change the properties of this i'm going to go up and select solid fill then i'm going to click ok i'm going to change this from wide lines to thin lines so they won't be obstructed so I'm just going to simply draft out a more pronounced knot arrow. Just draft something good. And I'm going to trim it. Alright, so now I've drafted a well-emphasized knot arrow. I could just drag this and move this to where I want to move it to. I'm going to move it somewhere here. So this is the knot direction clearly emphasized. So now I'm going to be selecting these floors one by one and editing the parameter. So firstly, this access road now, I'm going to click on tab and I'm going to select it. I'm going to click on edit type and I'm going to click on edit because I don't like the graphics parameter is showing me concrete. So I'm going to click on this asphalt material and I'm going to go to under graphics here. I'm going to change this from concrete to solid fill. Under this solid fill, I'm now going to make it change the color to light gray. And I'm going to click OK. Apply. OK. 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 So now it has changed. It's looking nice and all. So I'm just going to click on this alternate green area. I'm just going to delete this line. So I'm just going to tap, select. But before doing this, we have an issue. So I'm just going to highlight this whole project. And I'm going to go under filter, this filter tab here. 
Once this filter tab is done, I'm going to click on check none and I'm going to select all these thin lines. I don't need these thin lines again. So I'm just going to select all of them and I'm going to delete them. So as you can see, all the thin lines are gone so I could easily select my flaws. So now I'm going to click on this, this green area too. I'm going to click on edit type. I'm going to edit the graphics parameters now. Then I'm just going to change this to under graphics. I'm going to go to pattern. I'm going to go to field region. Click OK. Then I'm going to change the color to bright green. I'm going to use this. OK. Apply. OK. OK. Apply. OK. So as you can see, the green is now more pronounced. So now I'm going to edit this background green here or this outdoor green. So I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to click on edit type. I'm going to change this, edit the parameters of this material. Go to graphics as usual, solid fill. Click on this. This time I'm going to make the green very light. So I'm going to make it almost white, just as light as possible. Then I'm going to click apply. Okay. Okay. Apply. Okay. So as you can see, the background is coming out with a hue, which is nice. So now we want to place some site accessories. Some site accessories like parking, directions, and greenery. We currently, by default, if I go to architecture and I go to components, I cannot see Revit has not given me any site component or three. So I could just go from my library and I could just start putting, bringing in some components. So I'm just going to look for a good parking component and I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to bring this. I'm dragging this parking lot. So now I've dragged this. I could just click on space to rotate it and adjust the orientation. And I could just click on this. So now I've clicked on this. I could click on this parking now and I could just click on this array too. So for this array, I'm going to click on this vertical array. Then I'm just going to click on one point here and click on one point here. Then I'm just going to impute the number I want to array to. So I'm going to change this to 8. 8 is too much. I'm going to change this to 6. So another thing to appreciate the full graphics of your view is always important to go over to this detailed level and change it to fine. So now you could see the, the parking lot properly. So I'm also going to go to my components library again and I'm going to look for some other nice accessories I could add to the site. So now I'm just going to be dragging in some trees that I hope are not too heavy. All right. So now we've dragged in some trees. We are just going to try and place them. So some of these trees can be really heavy. So I'm going to place one over here and I'm going to place one over here. Okay, so I think that is enough. So now we are going to do the final graphic settings for this site plan. So we are going to click on this and we are going to right click override graphics in view by category and we are just going to override it and half tone it. Alright, so we are going to type GD to access the graphics display panel and first of all we are going to turn on this smooth and with anti-aliasing. We are going to go to shadows, we are going to click on cast shadows, turn on shadows, we are going to go to lighten. We are going to reduce the sunlight to about 60, increase the ambient light to about 20, reduce the shadows to about 5. Then we are going to go to this in light side, um, in session lighting settings. Then we are just going to click on sunlight from top to right and we are going to click OK. And we are going to click apply to apply these settings and we are going to click OK. So as you can see, you can see the side plan, the graphic setting is in place. So now we are just going to click on this reference plane, hide it, we don't need it. Then we are going to, going to go to sheets and create a new sheet. Then we are just going to drag in this site plan and place it. Then as you can see, the site plan is too big, so we could just reduce the scale. We could change the scale to custom scale, then we'll now impute the new scale we want. Let's use 250 and see if it will enter. It's still too big. I could still, it's not actually too big. What I could do is I could just activate this show crop region and I could just crop everything out to this point and crop to this point crop to this point then i'm going to just go to this tab here and hide crop region again then i'm going to click out and place this site appropriately so now we've placed the site we are going to make sure the title is here and we're just going to drag this to this point here to make sure so as you can see everything is set in place we have site plan and this you know, we have placed it on sheets so now we're just going to click on inside and we're going to do some annotations we're going to go to annotate we're going to go to text how we are going to edit the type of text we want to use so we're going to click on edit duplicate view edit type sorry we're going to click on duplicate view let's just name this text one 
So now we've named this text one. I'm just going to click on it. We are going to change the thanks for style to my favorite paper snooer. We could download it. The TRT file is online. I'm going to change the text size to three. I'm going to okay. The tab size, everything is okay. I'm going to click okay. So now I'm first going to annotate this building. I'm going to name it main building. Then I'm just going to place it. I will adjust it. I'm going to write another text parking lot. I'm also going to not um, name this walkway. I'm going to name this access, site access. Then I'm going to name this building access or main access. So just this just to mention but a few. So as you can see, everything is set in place now. So we are just going to click Ctrl P to print it out. Don't know the settings of printing, I'm just going to show you now. So we are going to click on this select fuse or sheet first. Then we are going to make sure this combined select of you is selected. So we are going to click combine multiple. We are going to go to select. So under select, Revit is going to show us a numerous set of views. So we are just going to click on this multiple file tab. We are going to check this out, check this out, and it will be left with sheets. So we are just going to pick the sheet we want to print. That is A003. We are going to click on it and we are going to click select. We are, they will ask us whether we want to save the settings, but no need for that. I'm going to click no. Okay, so we are going to go to setup. Under the setup, we are going to change this from letter. We are going to change this to A3. We are going to change this. Click on zoom now. So uh, I am going to make sure the zoom is at 100%. So you can see the option. We are going to make sure this is at landscape, not portrait. And we are going to click OK. Then we are going to click OK and locate where we want to print it. Let's name this site plotter. So we are going to click save and it's going to print. All right, so now it has printed. We are just going to click on our file explorer. So we are going to open the PDF file and we are going to see what we've done. So as you can see, you can see the site plan we've done. This is very beautiful. All right, so this is the final result of what we've been doing. So if the video was helpful, don't forget to like, share with your friends and subscribe.